Chris and Shields is here. What's up? It's way up at Angela Yee. Mano's here. Yeah, I'm here. New We're Mano. looking at the two Olympic gold medalists, wow. but also every single belt you can possibly imagine. This is crazy. Clarissa Shields got it. Okay. Hey, girl. Thank you for having me. How could I not? Y'all know what a big fan I am of you, not just because of the champion that you are, but also because of what you're doing for boxing and for women's boxing. You know, when you couldn't get the right money and the right uh, situation, you're like, you know what? I'm going to do my own fight. And I always talk about yep. that and put all women on the undercard. When you did that, I was like, this is game changing for people. 100%. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes you can't wait for them to give you give you an a, a opportunity. You got to go and make one for yourself. Yeah, and that's what I did with that. And people still talk about that to this day. To this day. It's yeah. always, yeah. And you also have your own promotion company now, right? T-Rex. Yeah. T-Rex okay. Boxing Promotions. Mm -hmm. I'm excited about that. I just signed my first two fighters, Samantha Kitchen and Jaquan McElroy. Samantha Kitchen is ranked number three at 140 pounds. Ooh. That's the weight class where Alicia Baumgartner is at, Katie Taylor, Amanda Serrano. Those are the top three at that weight class. So, of course, I want to get her big enough to where she can definitely beat all of them. And if there's anybody to listen to when it comes to boxing, it's clear. That last Shills. fight, you fought at what? 175. 175? That's, no, so that's heavyweight. Mm -hmm. Why you beat her like that? Hey! Why, 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 why you Second like round, that, it was like a minute like and ten seconds. Like why would you do it? It was the disrespect from her that I people don't know what disrespect really is. You know what I'm saying? Like she walking all up, all up in my face, getting in my grill, like mm. trying to like press me, <laughs> trying to press me with her body. I'm like, I can't even beat her right now, and she's trying to press me, and then I got to be professional. So it was like when I got when I was able to have a chance to put my hands on, I'm like, man, I'm gonna drop her ass real quick. She was about to call the fight. They were going to call the fight. Her the corner. ref was, the, her corner was standing up. He didn't have had no white towel. But the, right. the, the footage I saw was like everybody left the ring. Like y'all all left and she still was locked out. Knocked out. And then they brought the helicopter. <laughs> no, I'm right. saying that the helicopter came. <laughs> and had the hell her yeah, that's crazy. Y'all yeah, all was gone. And I seen that the, the people in there sweeping. I was like, wow. Shut up. <laughs> but honestly, that was like the quickest ever. Right. You know, and, and such an exciting boxer that you are, too, because I think um, you went in there knowing that you were going for the knockout early. Yeah, you know what? I do that every fight, trying to get the knockout. Like, I haven't be, be before this fight, I have dropped girls, stung girls, but I spent so much time this past year and a half, two, three years, turning over my punches because my punches were not landing. They're landing, but they're not landing how I need them to land mm -hmm. to get the knockout. So we worked Why? so hard on that. Why you felt like that they wasn't landing? No, they were landing, but they're not landing. They're landing like here mm -hmm. or like here. I'm Do like, it I'm harder, like for real, here, <laughs> on the knuckle because these are two biggest, three biggest right. knuckles. So if it's right. if it's landing here, right. they're not. This is where you want to hit them at. Where you want to hit them, right? So it was like with my punches, I'm so fast that when I'm trying to turn them motherfuckers over, they just not turning mm. all the way. By the mm. by the time I hit you, it's here. Okay, mm. I need to hear. Right. So we work so hard to make sure I can twist that. Wrist over in time. and get it over to where it lands. So it just worked out this fight. And uh, we've been working so many years on it. I'm just happy that it finally came because, you know, a couple of little haters talking about some old Clarissa got pillow fits. Like, man, I was sleep, y'all hoes. Is y'all crazy? Ooh, tough. That. You started at what at what weight class? Because you, 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 you did uh, three three different uh, weight classes, right? It's five, five now. Five. So you 154. Started with, you started at 154. 160. So that's welterweight. In light welterweight. Light welterweight? No, super. Super welterweight. Super welterweight. Because 147 is, is what is welter, welterweight. Right. So 54 is 54 super welterweight. Super welter. 60 is middleweight. Mm -hmm. 68 is super middleweight. Mm -hmm. 175. Is you unified every one of those weight classes. I haven't unified. I, I, yep, I have unified every last one of them, but I haven't been undisputed at 175 yet. That's okay, my next right. goal. But you just got there. Yeah. That's so your this next goal. So this is actually goal. the Ooh. first fight at heavyweight. Yep. Congratulations. Yeah, that's thank a, you. And that's a hard thing to do because right, your yeah, body yeah. is different right. now. Because yeah. you, you, you feel a different in in your power. Like, do you feel like you are naturally um, more powerful at, at middleweight or super middleweight? Because you know sometimes when you go up, you might, you might lose that power. No, nah, I think I felt the strongest I've ever been at 175. You know, I fought at 60 and I was fast and I was in great shape there. Had an eight pack. I fought at 68. Mm -hmm. But 75, I'm like, man, how strong I was in camp. I was sparring a man that was 190 pounds uh, all uh, all throughout camp. All your life? No, all throughout this oh, okay. camp for this fight. He was like 170, 160. But, man, the guy I was sparring against the first time we sparred to get ready for this heavyweight championship, man, he roughed me up. I said, oh, shit. 
I don't know if I should have came to this weight class because, yeah, he's at 180, but that's what she gonna wait for the fight. Mm -hmm. 180, 185, and he roughed me up the first the first time we sparred. Mm -hmm. Then and then the second time we sparred, he roughed me up a little bit too. And I was like, damn, like I gotta figure this out because it wasn't like. He was a good boxer, but it was like I just couldn't figure out how to deal with the width of his body. Was, mm -hmm. You know what I'm weight. saying? Right. And the power. I'm like, dang. So I had to really, you know, I'm used to having a fast hands. It was like, no, you got to sit down. So when I started sitting down on my punches, that's when I started getting the best out of him mm -hmm. and sparring. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because at first it was like I'm trying to light him up. Ooh, 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 ooh. And he like, I don't care about that shit. Bop, bop. Push me <laughs> against the ropes. Shoulder, body. I'm like, God, that's well, great as far as training, yeah. but it had to have been so frustrating for you because you're not used to. <laughs> no, it was definitely frustrating, but it gave me something yeah. to, like think about. Like you're going to heavyweight. This is what, this is what her game plan is. She can't outbox you. She can't outspeed you. So what's she gonna do? Try to rough you up, and this is exactly what he's doing. So I'm like, okay, I know what I need to do. So as we kept, as we kept working, I don't know. It was just one sparring, probably two sparring sessions where I'm like, you know what? I'm going a, I'm to a try this for this for this sparring session. We had about eight rounds in. And I remember I just was like, we going to just work on, like, every punch you throw. Like, we not throwing it unless it's hard and it's flush. And when I box like that, oh, it was a whole different story. Mm -hmm. whole different story. So is that the thing to spar with men? I've always sparred with men. Ever since you do, first started in the gym. Yeah. So, so, so do most female boxers spar with men? Some do, some mm -hmm. don't. But I let every man know, like, when you get in the ring with me, I got so much respect for them. Please don't get in here playing. <laughs> don't take it easy right. on me. Do, do not, because you do that, I'm going to tell you to get out the ring and call somebody else in. Like, I'm a real world champion. I don't I don't play in the ring. So it's like, all that, oh, you don't hit girl stuff? All right, well, I'm a woman. Get out. How old were you when you won your first uh, gold in the Olympics? 17. And then you went back to school after that high school. You yeah. have, went to graduate from high school. 12th grade. You know how crazy that back, is to one, be in high school as an Olympic right, gold medalist? Right, the crazy. first very, time very for nuts. women's boxing Super in the USA. Star. That's a huge right. deal. No, it's very nuts. I remember, like, I was having my documentary mm -hmm. at the time, T-Rex, and they were following me all around school. And everybody was my friend then. I'm like, you know what? <laughs> half y'all don't even, up, yeah. half y'all wouldn't even speak to me, give me a pencil, piece of paper now. <laughs> now y'all all my cousin and my friends. Like, y'all so fake. <laughs> and, you, and you have that documentary. And then you also have the movie, The Fire Inside, coming out December 25th, right? On oh Christmas. My God. That's going to be amazing. So Ryan Destiny is playing you in the yes. movie. Have you seen it yet? Because being I've that it's coming out. I've seen it twice. Okay. And uh, Tearjerker. I knew it had to be because your yeah. whole story and, you know, I think in real life we see where you are now. So mm -hmm. we know you come out on top, which yeah. is amazing. But the journey to get here. Yeah. Ooh, you wouldn't even be who you are, though, without having gone through. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All of that. You know, to win an Olympic gold medal and come back home and not get one endorsement, not one sponsorship. Mm. Like crazy. Right. To have. I don't know what the athlete has dealt with that. And continue to be like, you know what? I'm going to go for a second Olympic gold medal. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, you know what? I guess the Olympics ain't what it's cut out to be. Ooh, Let's try As we can else. see right now, because there's a lot going on with the Olympics. But that's how I, I would have felt. But it was something to me like, just because people don't give you recognition, I mean, you don't get your self-recognition. That that's, taught me that's that. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. That taught me that. It's like, you talking about some, wait, so you mad you won an Olympic gold medal? No. Like no, I'm, I'm I'm happy as hell, and and I earned it. But just because people don't give you, oh no endorsement, no sponsorships, no magazine covers, no cereal boxes, I mean I'm supposed to feel like what I did wasn't worth nothing. Right. It was like what I did was worth a lot. Mm -hmm. That's right. As you can see in women's boxing now, had right. I not won a gold medal back then, all these women y'all see boxing on TV now would not be boxing on TV. So that's the question I want to ask you, right? So women's boxing been around for a while, but do you right now feel like you are the face? of women's boxing and, and you actually are opening up doors for women right now making it bigger even I mike tyson will say that uh, yeah. yeah absolutely you know, terrence mm -hmm. crawford will say that Roy Roy jones, jones jr right. mm -hmm. there, there's not a, a male fighter right now you ask them who's the best female fighter everybody is going to say clarissa shields except old jakey paul <laughs> now well, he's because he's a hater. He's a hater. <laughs> so who he think is the, is, the, is the face of uh? He think it's the a, best. He think it's Amanda Serrano, but it's like <laughs> it's not right. 
It's impossible. I don't think anybody would dispute that except you know, right. except him because he's right. a hater. He mad that because I'm a female and I can beat him in a fight, he's like kind of, you know, <laughs> pressed about it. He's like, bro, I've been boxing for 18 years. If 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 I can't beat a YouTuber in a fight, it's a problem. Wow. <laughs> All right, I want to get into some other things. You know, you know I do. Because Clarissa, last time Girl. you were here, you was no longer engaged. You were single. But now you, let me see something. Let me see. Okay. Now you're engaged. Is that your engagement ring? Like, what's going on here? It's right here, right? My engagement ring right here. So what's going on? She engaged. That's your, wait, hold on. That's your right hand. Mm -hmm. It's not supposed to be on the right hand? No, it's on your left hand. <laughs> clearly, yeah, man, I don't you know is, nothing. Clearly, you I are nothing. so Clearly, I'm, I haven't been messy. engaged. Messy. No, because last time we talked about this, and now you're engaged again. Shout out to that man. What's going on? Are you engaged? You were engaged again. But then I see some of your tweets. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, this tweet right here. Oh, here she go. <laughs> I love a man who craved me, not just sex, but my scent, my vibe, my company. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, then you also said, I don't cry no more. My eyes get watery and I'll just mm -hmm. shake it off. Is that to do with your relationship or is that to do with other things? Probably a bit of both, but honestly, like, I'm at a place in my career where it's just that maybe we're on a break. You know, we're not together right now. Maybe we're on a break, mm -hmm. you know. Um... I didn't want to talk about it because it's just like relationships, you break up and you get back together. But it's just like for me right now, it's like I got so much other things going on. I'm trying to really be like the greatest I can be. Mm. You know, you have this window right here to be great. Each time you drink, each time you smoke, each time you do something that you're not supposed to do, it gets smaller. I'm, I haven't done those things, but it's like time still is ticking, you know. So I'm 29 years old and I don't got time to be un. Un, like unhappy about nothing. That's right. I, I just don't have time. And last like, time you said you just weren't happy. I remember you said that. Yeah, and it's like now it's like you have to accept people for who they are. I can't force you to do stuff that I think should naturally be done. Mm -hmm. Like if I like you, I massage you. If I like you, I compliment you. If I like you, I buy you stuff. If I like you, mm -hmm. I, you know, like it's simple stuff. I text you. I call you. You don't have to ask me to call you. Mm -hmm. Ask me to text you. Ask me to like that's what love is. So if you're with somebody who have you doing that, maybe you're just not the one. So who are you to keep saying like that you're the one and getting mad at this person because they can't deliver on that? Right. So it's like at the end of the day, I'm like, look, I'm I am too damn fine <laughs> to be sitting here, and I'm the best in the world. Not yesterday, but today. I know that's right. And I'm all natural. I ain't got no fake booty, no fake titties, no nothing. <laughs> maybe I got it going on. But right. I said you probably can't do that. I would think. Cause what you, girls got you, fake breasts? A couple of them. Really? Because really? I would think it'd be what? better not to. Look up Ebony Bridges. Her breasts bigger than your head. So what happens <laughs> if she get punched in her chest? She, you just get punched. Ooh. You think the ref gonna stop it? You Ooh. the one got big breasts. <laughs> But okay, because you posted his birthday the other day too, yeah, and you celebrated his yet. birthday. I deleted you, it. All right, okay. No, nope. no, because, you deleted it. No, I didn't. Oh, because like I said, you know, like I don't think, I don't think I'm the person right now to be in no relationship right now. Right. Sometimes you got to be selfish because you got things you trying to accomplish still right now. Mm -hmm. Right. So you out trying to accomplish these these goals and. And right now might not be the right time. Well, Mano, as a man, like what she's saying is true. You shouldn't. I shouldn't have to be like, you need to call me. You need to do this. You need to like these are things that should naturally. Right. But I will say, some guys, I'm always like, who did you date before me that you don't yeah, know how to oh, do certain never, things? He ain't, never, he ain't never been with a boss like me. Oh. Yeah, and sometimes they don't know like no. how to. They don't require that. as much, and it's like, but well, we were together four and a half never years, been so a it's boss like. like her. You may have not re knew, knew that at the beginning, but as we continue to date, you already know, I don't really bite my tongue a whole lot. So Oh, we can see that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. How's that. that work, though? Like, it's dating working. you, like, you know, it could get crazy, huh? <laughs> I mean, you don't put your hands on me, you Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who gonna put their hands yeah, on you? No like, one's doing that. Who's <laughs> gonna try that? <laughs> no one's doing that. It's been it's been tried in my younger years, and I had but, to show some niggas. Yeah, that's, where, that's why like, we are where we but, are now. Yeah, yeah no. <laughs> But I'm Knocking saying like socks. <laughs> what? I'm just be like, it's just the with with the whole relationship stuff, it's just like, you know what? I have to really like for my the last couple of years I've ever I've always chosen everybody over myself. Mm -hmm. And not just him, you know, take right. out him out the equation, my family, friends, you know, uh parents. I've always put them before me. I've always put like what I wanted to do second. And it hasn't made me feel good, you know, so 
I'm strong enough to where I can do it and deal with it. But it's been like very stressful and I've been and I've dealt with depression and anxiety mm. be, and it's because of it. And it's like I asked myself recently, I'm like, what what are you sad about? You just knocked the girl out. Bad. Like you just slept her. To That's death. what you've been working on. And now I'm, 12,000 right. people show up to see you fight and now you're upset and you're sad. And I said, why are you sad? And I'm like, one, I don't want to be in Flint. Two, I want to be out in Dubai somewhere. Mm -hmm. Three, um, I want to live in Atlanta. So I saw you looking at houses on uh, Zillow. Yeah. You was like, I'm on Zillow looking at houses. I'm not playing. <laughs> out. Jeez, okay. No, so I'm doing all that and I asked myself, well, if that's all the stuff that you want to do, why aren't you doing it? And the reason why I wasn't doing stuff was, was like, Oh, because he might think you're cheating. Oh, because this person will feel left out. Mm. Oh, because no. this person isn't ready. And then I got to a point where I'm like, do anybody consider me when they're making their decisions to no. have fun? And, and you know what? Life? Your happiness and, and with the people that you take care of around you, yeah. you can't do for people if you're not doing for yourself right. first. You yeah. know how they always say, put your oxygen mask on first? Okay. You got to do that first so that you can help. Self-preservation yeah. in the law of the land. You because if you're not good, yeah. everybody right. around you that you mm. you know do that for is not going to be good either. Preach, Angela. You see all these belts up here, okay? Right. You know what I'm saying? We got to make sure. And you know what's funny? When you knock people out, they'll be like, you're my favorite afterwards. Word. And that, how is that? Like when you fight somebody, but they're also a fan of yours, and you gotta knock them out. Mm, well, you know what? I believe I'm all these girls' favorite. <laughs> I don't give a damn what they say. <laughs> Alicia, <laughs> listen, I was her favorite. Mm -hmm. Amanda Serrano, she called me goat. She may say publicly that she's the goat, but privately, she know who the goat. What, yeah, what weight class she at? Forty. So y'all, y'all knock on me. Which one? Amanda. If she at at the one forty. Hey, listen. If she come to fifty four, even forty seven, and they got a world title on the line, right. I will make fights with these girls just right. because I know I'll have to go like down 30, 40 pounds. Yeah. But I have a great nutrition team, mm -hmm. and I believe that I could do it, still be healthy, still be strong, and win. You'd probably right. be even stronger down at one fifty four. Losing weight sometimes it do take away. The, the, the mass. Some stuff because I I did feel stronger at seventy five than I felt mm -hmm. on, at any weight class. Because I I looked at Crawford fight the mm -hmm. last fight, he went from what was with the 47. last fight one forty seven to one fifty four, and yep. I feel like this fight I feel like he, he didn't look as strong his his power punches to me. He was in there with a very awkward fighter. Mm -hmm. You know this is not. I don't think he would have had that much trouble with Charlo. Right. And Charlo has been fighting at fifty four for mm -hmm. however long. I think Bud is very strong, but when you're in there with somebody who's awkward and you're also com coming up a weight class, I think he just had to get the cobwebs off for that weight class. Mm -hmm. Now that he's there, I think that he'll know what he needs to do forward to train to make his fights right. okay. better. Okay. Now, I want to ask you about this movie, son, because like you said, it is a tearjerker. Yeah. So talk to me about what was going through your head like when you saw it, if there are certain things that was really... You know, you've had a lot of things happen to you when you were younger. So how was it for you watching it the first time? And there are certain things that you're like, maybe I sh I'm not going to put this in. Because I know even talking to, like, your mom, I'm sure that she's heard you discuss, like, your childhood. And I, I don't know. I know you say your parents, and I'm sure that you feel a way because sometimes we want to protect our parents, too, with, yeah. from the mistakes that they've made. I think that my mom and my dad is portrayed great in my movie, mm -hmm. you know. Um, before... Barry Jenkins even started re started recording the movie. He sent me the script, and I read the script. And only one thing I wanted taken out, one, when I read the script. Actually, it was two. But he took one out, and the other one I, I, I let him leave in. But it was one that was particularly about my mom. Mm -hmm. I said, um, I don't like that that's, that, that, that's, that that's in there, and that for the whole world to be able to see this, I don't want my mom to feel no way toward me. Right. So I had to let him know, like, that part definitely has to come out. If nothing else you change that I said, that has to. He took it out. So when I watched the movie, it was um, it was very good. The only thing I could say about, like, the beginning of the movie, it shows me as a little girl boxing. And I mean it's on the bottom of my heart. I never had a problem with sparring nobody in the gym when I was a little girl. <laughs> I came to the gym, head, head honcho. Like, nobody was better than me. I fought better than all of them. But in a movie, it's like, oh, I came in there as this little girl, and the boys were beating me up and taking it easy on me. It's like, no, nah, that That's shit That's not never, what happened, that, right? That never happened. And I told them in the movie, I said, when I read the script, I didn't, I couldn't figure out and play this part. But I said, had I seen it, I would have told y'all, like, y'all is crazy. Like, when I was a kid from the age 11 
till 16, 17, I was whooping everybody in the gym. Not just little boys, the grown <laughs> men too. I was 15 sparring a guy that was 25. And he came in there talking some shit first round. Probably like the first 30 seconds, he hit me with a jab. First he said he don't he don't spar girls, he don't hit girls. I'm like, all right, whatever. Coach was like, well, she going to make you hit her. So he got in there, he threw a jab and hit me, boom. He like, man, it's too easy, man. It's a girl, blah, blah, blah. He threw a jab again, boom, hit me again. Then all of a sudden, he tried. He like, man, I don't want to spar no girl. And then he kept doing that. So then he went to throw that same jab. I slipped, hit him with a right hand, boom. He go flying into the ropes. His eyes got so big. And I just started whooping his ass. I just had him on the ropes, just beating him down, beating him down. And that was only round one. I did that for four rounds. Four rounds. And when we got done, he walked up to me like, man, how old are you? You like 20 or something? I'm like, no, I'm 15, bro. He was like, he like, bro, no. Everybody in the heat, all these people with him start screaming. So you tell me you you a 15-year-old girl? I'm like, yeah. And he was like, how long you been boxing? I'm like, four years. And he just was like. Man, you probably the hardest person I'd ever spar. Like, I ain't never got done like that. I'm like, well, that's your fault for not taking me seriously and talking about something that you don't spar girls. I bet I bet next time you come here talking that shit, you're going to have your hands up and you're going to be ready to spar. But I appreciate you giving me my work. And I went and hit the bag. And he was just like, she ain't even tired after piecing me up, bro. Like, she crazy. <laughs> I'm like, at the end of the day, boxing is a sport. It's a sport. I hate this whole female male thing. Like, yeah, yeah, y'all got penises and we got vaginas. I get it. But at the same time, if you did the exact same workouts as a man growing up from the time you were a kid, you're going to know how to handle that. And boxing is not all about strength. Yeah, men are born stronger with bigger bones and bigger necks and all that stuff. But technique matters. Skills mm-hmm. matters. Like, you think I'll look like this if I went in there trying to go power for power with dudes? Hell no. Nah. Head on a swivel. You're not about to hit me. You know what's interesting? And I saw you reposted this, too. The whole thing with the Olympic, um, yeah, with yeah. the trans athletes. And it was well, in the... she ain't no trans. Right. She's yeah. not. Nope. And you had to take it. About? Iman Khalif. Yeah. And that was that was unfortunate. And you did apologize for yeah. for your... Because there was wrong information that was put out there. Yeah. You said that she and was she, trans? Yeah. And, and, that, she, and wasn't. she wasn't she trans. Wasn't. And I saw... But I think it's important to take accountability. And you did, like, say... You know, I was wrong. I had some wrong information. That's why people got to research, Yeah, you know, more. But that was given to me by my team Mm -hmm. and even by Fox. So, you know, before I went on there, before I talk about this, like, I'm the face of women's boxing. So as I go and talk about this, it's like, look, if there was a transgender who turned to a female in their boxing, that is completely completely unfair. Mm -hmm. Me? I do it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that, right, right. That's just right. me. You, it's a that's you. I do it. But for, the sport, is, yes. but for the sport, for the it's, sport. Unfo- it's unfair. Yeah, it's unfair. But you'll do it. I do it. Because, right. like, <laughs> women spar against women. Women have been brought up to, like, sadly, maybe some women even train less and not as hard as the men. I don't know. I'm just saying that for me, I spar against men mm. daily since right. I was 11 years old. So rather... Iman Khalif, like, if, if she was a transgender or whatever, I still would have been like, this is the Olympics. I'm not backing down for no challenge. Like, you think you can take, take a gold medal for me? Mm-hmm. She would have to fight me for that. Like, homegirl that quit, yeah, so, she's yeah. soft. Yeah, she was bad. She's soft. Oh, I've never been hit that hard in my life. She was like, it's over. That was so fast. But, hey. but that's why it took wildfire. You got, like, uh, a little white girl, and you think that this is transgender, and whatever the case may be, and she's crying these wolf tears, and you think that at the end of the day, like I said, I wasn't in there to get hit, but I ain't never, I haven't been hit that hard yet. Not even by a man where it was like, oh, just get me out of here. Right. I just never, haven't dealt with never that. never been to that point. No. You know what I love about Clarissa? Like, because I've read so many different stories and articles about you. Mm-hmm. She's like, I don't know where you're going with this. Mm-hmm. I watch about you. her life. You know, because you said the little white girl. You dated a white guy before. I did. <laughs> I'm tired of you ladies. <laughs> National anthem now. <laughs> yeah. if you don't, <laughs> I'm gonna sing a black one. Lift every voice and sing. That's our one. <laughs> Mado, if you don't sit down with that medal. <laughs> She was ducking the question. No, no, no. He was bobbing and weaving that question. This, this, 
<laughs> no. But listen, I, I did. I did get a white guy before. And listen, I think that I'm probably the easiest motherfucker to trick because I got tricked. <laughs> and we did it for about three, four weeks. Oh. And then I was done with that crap. But, man, <laughs> I'm not racist or anything, but I am I am straight on that. Like, okay. I, 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 I love my black men. Mm-hmm. That's right. You know, I wonder if you're going to end up with somebody from Flint or Detroit or, you know, later in life. Or Atlanta. Atlanta. Uh, hey, Atlanta got some good-looking men. Detroit got some good-looking men, too. But you're still in recovery, so you can't. Yeah, you know. Yeah. But look, I'm, look, my eyes still wander. Next huh? time I look, next time I see you, you're gonna be back engaged again, maybe. Girl, you know what? That is that, That's what gets on my nerves, <laughs> right? Like I'm a relationship type woman. Yeah, I'm not like I'm not for the streets. Yeah, I'm not like the whole dating around and stuff. I'm not like it's a couple guys like courting me a little bit, but it's like right now I'd be like, as soon as they do one thing I don't like, I'd be like, yeah, fuck that, I'm done. Mm-hmm. Like, I, like all right, bro, thanks. Right, not it, but. You know, when you're at the top of your game, and I'm really untouched in the industry, like when it comes to the Hollywood, mm-hmm. can't no guy say that he ever slept with me. So it's like, I feel like now it's some kind of type of weird competition for somebody to be like, oh yeah. I'm with Clement. Because it's a good look for a guy, too. Well, it's a, it's a guys think look. about that. They'll be it's like, a beautiful look. Yeah. They'll I'm be like, show you some pictures after we get off of here. Okay. Oh, I can't. <laughs> you know. Listen, our off camera interview be, uh, right. conversation be way different. <laughs> than this but honestly I like to talk about that side of you because I feel like you're always talking about boxing but your personal life also is maturing at the same time mm-hmm. like what you have going on outside the ring you know you yeah. got your Everlast gloves too the limited edition yeah I'm gonna get make those. sure you get them yeah I'm getting those because I have some pink gloves at home from the time that I you know what? I don't I, I'm trying to think am I the first woman to have a signature glove with Everlast I have to go do my research but I feel like I am and the glove is definitely like we designed it together, but I'm so happy it, that it turned out how it did. Mm-hmm. Who and was I, the face of a women boxing before? Ali's daughter, Layla. Right? Layla. Yeah, Layla. She, she I was retired say. though, right? She been retired for like 20 years. Oh, you wow. wanted to fight her at one point. Yeah, you know that. Yeah, it's I been remember that long? when I first. Yeah, and it's not gonna happen, but no. Nah, but you know what? You respect it. If Mike That's... Tyson can fight against Jake Paul, he like it didn't 60. happen though. It's happening November 17th. They still gonna do that? Look at you, tomorrow. they still going to do it? <laughs> I, thought, I thought that, I that was that done. I don't know that I know that that's a great idea. I mean, listen, I first of all, somebody got on me because I'm like, bro, y'all thinking that Mike Tyson is still the 18-year-old Mike Tyson. Like, he's 60. Yeah, I don't know if that that's the... And I then, love Mike Tyson. I'm a fan. I'm from Brooklyn, so you know he's I mean, a hero. I mean, but I mean, if Jake, if Jake hurt Uncle Mike Tyson, Uncle Mike. it's going to be a problem. I just don't like the optics of it. You know, no, either. it's like, look, he's he's younger. He's a little bit bigger. Like, yeah, he's not the best boxer, but he's still just... And he's strong. Yeah. Man, like, you I, know I don't what? like I, it. What do you think? Okay, I want to ask you what you think about this because um, we've talked about Ryan Garcia and Devin Haney before. What does Devin Haney need to do now if you were going to tell him as somebody in the sport? Um, because, you know, I, I have so much love for Devin Haney, but I want to know what you think if you were going to advise him should be his next moves. One, I want to say something about Ryan. Mm-hmm. He's a clown. Yeah, so he was in your DMs and then talking crazy and then saying racist. Come on, having a super baby. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Ryan, Ryan Garcia. Oh, my God. So that's the thing with these dudes, right? And then when you when you expose what he said, he tried now, to come at you. Yeah, now now I'm ugly all of a sudden. Now I'm this. And, I, and then he called me a lesbian or a lesbo. Like, baby, I have been called worse things, mm-hmm. honestly. Right. You're like, that's fine, whatever. Whatever. Who, who who cares? It's the fact, like, with Ryan, to me, this is what made me mad about the whole situation. And even in the boxing world, and they can feel how they feel about it. When Ryan tested positive and then they got proven that the dude really did cheat, bro, y'all still riding with Ryan. I don't understand And this. mad at Devin. Right. Clown behavior. <laughs> Clown behavior, like, how don't you stick with the fighter and the brother who did everything right? Nobody gave a shit about Devin. Right. Everybody's still on there tweeting this, tweeting that. Oh, Devin, there's Devin, that. Devin's a uh, uh, pussy, Devin. And, the, and they're saying all this stuff. And it was like, at the everything you're saying about Devin is Ryan. Mm-hmm. Ryan, and some people feel like maybe he shouldn't have taken that fight because Ryan did come in above weight. And he had the opportunity to say, okay, but, you know, there's money on the line. Ostrin. thing. Mm-hmm. That's it. Ostrin. No. Ryan's going to throw that same hook, no matter if he was on Ostrin or not. But it wouldn't have been as strong and been as powerful so had he Austin, not been on Ostrin. 
Because that's his one, he's like a one-trick pony, so that's his one punch that, that, that left, that right. hook. Ostrin. The Osterman, you think that the Osterman was strong enough in his body to make him? Absolutely. And look, Devin ain't no knockout artist, but mm -hmm. Devin will take a fight with anybody. To me, Devin is the better boxer. Mm -hmm. He's the better boxer. No matter if Ryan's a little bit bigger or stronger, whatever the case, he's a better boxer. And I knew that he was going to try to outbox Ryan. But to get hit, come on now. Like, people right. are like, they're so stupid. To get hit with the hook the first round and it hurt the first round, Come on now. It drop you? Like, come on. Like, that's not even logical. And then people are tank disappointing me. I'm sorry. Oh, right. Psh. He he fucking, he fucking riding with Ryan. Ryan. Like, mm -hmm. like, 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 that's his brother or that's his cousin. Like, bro, this dude is a drug cheat, bro. Would you, if you were Devin Haney, would you fight him again? Man, what? You can't take no drugs drugs against me and think I ain't going to get my lick back. You crazy. Mm -hmm. I, would, I would fight Ryan every time I seen him. <laughs> Not in the care, ring. I don't care where we at. I see him at, see him at the Venetian. <laughs> see him at the club. You better have your people with you because if I see you, ah, oh, you're right. You ain't getting away with that. No. Uh, well, listen, I, I know we got to go because the show, you know, has to continue mm -hmm. on. But Clarissa, every time you come up here, you know I always got to see you. I'll shift whatever around. Yes, and I thank you for that so much. Because I love me some Clarissa Shields, like, from the beginning. Try Me was the perfect song for you to walk out to. Oh, my God. Dej Love is Dej Dej just Lope. the beautifulest queen ever, man. She's tiny. <laughs> She's tiny. Uh, but you know what? While we're here, I need to have a man. I haven't had a man rap me out yet. I want Meek Mills. Okay. Stop, stop okay. playing. I love okay. Meek Mill. That's my favorite rapper. All right. I think I can't imagine why he wouldn't do that. I know. I, I don't think that he know. I went to the fight in Philly, Jerron Ennis. I was like, because, you know, he was playing Meek Mill at the fight and everything. I was like, Meek should have been here to walk him out because that ah. was huge in Philly. Listen, I, I need Meek Mill. I think after that, like, I can be able to retire peacefully. Is it going to be the next fight in the Little Caesars again in Detroit? I, I think December 11th I will be fighting at Little Caesars again. Oh, man. And then the movie comes out? That's yeah. what I'm talking about. See, that, you, see that's called marketing. <laughs> What you call that? See, I they don't know. I know it. all about that. <laughs> I'm excited. All right. Well, I'm definitely gonna be right there watching that sure. movie, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna try to come to the fight because I wanted yeah, yeah. to make it last time, but it looked like a time. Detroit looked like they was having an amazing, amazing. Oh, and, we did. And we then partied you went to at five o'clock in the morning and had your party in Flint because you always represent Flint, and I love that too. For sure. All right. Well, Clarissa Shields, such a pleasure to have you. You know, I got to get it all up in your business. You never know what we're going to say. I know. I wish we had another hour because I got a lot more to talk to you about. <laughs> but you'll be back. I will. Okay. Thank you. The champ.